Hello everyone, and welcome to this video on the subject of vertex paint in Blender 2.8. Vertex painting can be very useful in the instance that you have a very high poly mesh that isn't UV unwrapped. In this case, this model has been UV unwrapped, uh, but that won't always be the case. And I'm going to be painting a skin material on this model with a very similar workflow to the texture painting video I did about a month ago. I'm setting the viewport display to material. You can do this in the rendered view as well, but it might be a little slower. So I'll keep it at material and I am in the cycles render engine. And let's begin by switching from object mode to vertex paint. And once you've done that, you can see that it's created this little data block here in the uh, object data panel. Uh, just labeled COL for color, but we're going to change that to skin. Now let's come over to the node editor or the shader editor as it's referred to now. And we'll type shift A, go to input, vertex colors, and choose skin. In older versions of Blender, you'd have to add the attribute node and then name it according to how it was named in the object data. So this is a lot easier. Let's plug that color into the base color of the principled shader. And you'll probably notice that in the tool settings for vertex painting, there's fewer options available than, say, if you were in texture painting. For instance, there's no fill tool if you wanted to do fill the whole object with one color. But there is a way of doing this. So first, let's pick a base color for the skin. And if you just type Shift-K, that will uh, completely add that color to the model. You can alternatively go to Paint and then Set Vertex Colors. But skin isn't just one flat color, so we need to add a little bit of variation. So if I come over, I can add a little bit of maybe a pinkish color. And take the strength of that brush down. And I'll just add some of this color into areas like the bridge of the nose and the cheeks, some on the forehead, uh, to add that color variation. Actually, let's control Z to undo that, because now we can come down to this new option, which is symmetry and we can X mirror this just like we can in, in texture paint mode. This feature I think was actually added in later updates in 2.79, uh, but now it's officially here in 2.8. I won't really be going for a super realistic skin shader here, but um, we are going to be discussing some of the important key elements to creating a good skin shader, but, but we're not gonna be doing any bump mapping, which is almost crucial in creating realistic skin. But in this video, we're just going to be focusing on the color itself. So now I'll add a little bit of brown, like a light brown, and take the strengths down even more. And just dab some of this in. That's maybe a bit high, but I kind of like it around the eyes. Just take the strengths down more. And it's important to remember that with vertex paint, you know, obviously the more vertices you have, the more detailed you can be. This is a fairly low poly model. It's using a multi-resolution modifier, but if I were to apply that modifier, I would have many more vertices, which would allow me to therefore paint in much higher detail. You may notice that I'm now adding a little bit of blue to the skin, which brings me to the next subject, which is uh, something that's sort of a standard amongst many artists when painting skin, particularly on the face, where you use yellow above the brow, red in the midsection of the head, and blue on the lower part of the head. So let's create a new vertex color slot, and we'll call this one Tones. And in the shader editor, we'll type Shift A, go to vertex colors, and then choose the Tones attribute and plug that right into the base color so that we can see it in the viewport. And now I'll set the color back to white so that we have a clean slate with the new uh, vertex color slot. I'll type Shift K to fill it with that white. And now I'll choose like a pale yellowish color uh, for the forehead and around the back of the head, this, generally the whole skull. And we can talk a little bit about why we use the yellow and the red and the blue. Uh, so for the forehead and the back of the skull, that skin is very thin. Uh, so that tends to have a little bit of a yellowish hue or a yellowish tone. 
the midsection of the face, the nose and the cheeks and the ears, for instance, they have more blood vessels in those areas. So those areas seem a little more fleshy. So we can add a little bit of this pinkish red to it to, uh, to indicate that that's where all of that blood underneath of the surface is. And as for the blue, I believe that that's less motivated by biology, by realism for skin, and more motivated just as an artist for contrast. Cooler colors typically look nice with warm colors. They're contrast colors, so. Um, but I can fill the rest of this in with a little bit of pink, just to give some more variation. Although that bluish, I think I see that more typically with men when painting men. Uh, because men shave and that area along the chin seems a little grayer or cooler naturally. But now I'm just blending all of these colors together to make the transitions a little smoother to create a nice gradient between them. So let's combine these two attributes together with a mix RGB node. And I'm going to set the blend type to color Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, but I'm going to add a little bit more detail, I think. So uh, let's make some room over here for the notes, because I will be adding some more. And then in the object to data, I'll click this little plus tab and I'll create a new vertex color slot. This one I'll just call detail. I like to name things with very simple, simple titles. Uh, so we'll type shift A and then choose vertex colors and the detail attribute. So we'll plug this into the, the base color. And now we'll fill this in again with white. And you may be wondering why I'm not doing this all on one attribute, on one vertex color slot. And you could, you could absolutely do that. But I think, you know, many Blender artists, because Blender has so many functions, you know, you can, you know, model, texture, Anime, you know, it's not really important to be great at all of those things. And I think sometimes you need to know your limitations. And with mine, my limitation is certainly painting. Um, you know, I'm okay, but I certainly I'm not a great painter. So doing it this way allows me to uh, get a good result, and then rather than risk ruining that result, I can just create a new layer and paint over top of it. So it's very helpful to me. So now I've mixed these together with a mix RGB. It's set to multiply, so it will only take those darker values that I just painted and uh, blend those together with those other vertex color slots. And I think that's good. I think you get the point of how to use the attribute nodes to, to mix different uh, color maps together. So now let's create a new vertex color slot, and we'll call this one SSS for subsurface scattering. And I can show you a really easy way to add subsurface scattering really fast. Uh, but it won't maybe work with all models, but it certainly will work fine for this one. So we'll set the color to white. Shift K to set that color. Um, need to first plug it into the color so that we can see it in the viewport. And so what I want is the subsurface scattering to be affected mostly on the very fleshy parts of the face, like the cheeks and the nose and so on. So let's go to paint and then choose dirty vertex colors. And that does a pretty good job of masking out all of the areas that uh, seem like, you know, around the edge of the ear, the nose, the chin. I am going to take the blur iterations up to two and I think that gives it a pretty good result. I also might want to switch to the blur brush and maybe these lips are a bit too white so I'll just blur some of that darker color and also along the bridge of the nose and basically just blending any of the areas that look a little too sharp. So now let's switch to rendered view and we can actually see what the subsurface scattering looks like. We'll plug the initial colors that we had back into the base color. And this new attribute, the subsurface scattering, will be the factor. We'll use the factor output into the subsurface scattering input. And I've just changed the color to, you know, like a pinkish fleshy color. 
and immediately it looks a thousand times better with the subsurface scattering. It's also important to remember that in addition to adding color, we can also use vertex colors to add values to the material, just like we did with the subsurface scattering. Here I'm using values of black and white to determine how specular the model is. Certain areas of the face, such as the nose and cheeks and forehead, produce a little more oil than the rest of the skin on the face, so they would naturally be a little more glossy. And that's basically it for this video, I think. I just wanted to go over, you know, I know a lot of times people who like the sculpt do a very high poly, uh, you know, a dynamic topology uh, sculpt, and rather than go through the process of the retopology, you could just use this process of adding a material, which essentially just saves you the trouble of having to UV unwrap it. So, uh, but that's it. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I'll leave links below, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.